Welcome into the Yards After College podcast powered by KSLSports.com. I'm Kyle Ireland and alongside me as always for this ride that we call the Yards After College podcast is the one and only Sam Farnsworth who is coming off of a, an amazing victorious Sunday in which his Denver Broncos <laughs> finally picked up their second win of the season. Sam, you guys are back in the win column for the first time in a, in a while. How does it feel? Do you feel like you're on cloud nine? Is the season turning around for you? <laughs> um, it feels numb, numb still. Uh, I don't know if that's the right word. I'm just saying, like, it's going to take a whole lot more than just picking up a win against the Packers at home for me to start feeling good about that franchise. Uh, that, look, it's I could spend a lot of time or very little time and get to the same result that it's just <laughs> not a great year for the Denver Broncos. I feel and like we need, we need to have like a bonus episode in which we just do like an hour deep dive on the Broncos. We'll bring JJ on the pod. <laughs> you guys can like have like this like eulogy of what the Broncos have been over the last eight years or whatever since Peyton Manning left. It, it would be great. It would be entertaining. But uh, yeah, I just... I'm almost like, hey, why are you guys winning games? Let's let's get the tankathon going and see if you you pull a you know Drake May or uh, Caleb Williams or something in the top two or three next year. Yes, yes, yes. Don't try to win anymore. Sell players, trade them, <laughs> get into a draft position to finally get a franchise type quarterback. Hopefully, I don't know, whatever. Like I, I think I think working in the media for as long as I did in Colorado kind of um, you know, really dulled my fan senses. And so even even though I've been separated from that aspect of my career for a few years now, it hasn't really ignited. Like oh, look, am I a Broncos fan? Sure. <laughs> I love I love sports. I have my favorite teams, but I guess when they're not playing so well, I'm just kind of like, all right, whatever. Be garbage. It's, it's, easy to, it's easy to move on when you've got so much else to occupy your time. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sam, uh, you, you mentioned the trade deadline. That's a week from tomorrow. We're recording on, uh, what is it, Monday the 23rd now. So it's on Halloween next Tuesday. So uh, next week, we'll probably talk a little trade deadline. Maybe see if uh, if we think any local guys might be on the move. There's a few guys that are in contract years that I could see maybe being expendable for what their current teams are looking for and could be valuable elsewhere around the league. But this week, uh, another week of awesome performances by the local players in the NFL. And I think we should start off with your, with your three stars. Should we do that? Yeah, definitely. Right. Sounds of course good. we should. <laughs> All right, let's 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 get into it. Third star. Third star for me this week, and you're gonna be saying what? Wait, we're third going actually. Star. We're actually going third star. No honorable mention to start. We're just going right into it. Look, 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 look. I could, I could I'd become accustomed. Like, you know, That's all I'm saying. Let's let's let let's go, Jalen Warren. You got into the end zone this week. A hey, good job for him. Um. Julian Blackman, good job, Julian. He he had a solid game, nice pick. Uh, but we're not we're not doing that this week. Although you just forced me into it. All right, <laughs> all right. We're going to my straight third star this week uh, because I think uh, I think I, I think it might be a little bit of a surprise that he's my third star, and the reason why it's because it's Puka Nakua. It's not a surprise that he's one of my stars, but why is he the third star and not the first star? Eight receptions. 154 yards the the guy is just continually um doing things that no one would have expected this season he's looking like not only the best rookie in the league he's looking like a top three wide receiver in the nfl the catch that he had you know eight catches but there's one catch in in particular that if if you weren't watching the rams or or you didn't see any of puka's highlights just hit x hit social media hit the google 
and search for Puka Nakua's catch yesterday, and you'll see what I mean. He makes this ridiculous contested catch along the sidelines and still is able to get his right he his left foot's in but the right toes just barely in i mean it's just perfection uh the things that he is doing as a rookie are what you'd expect a five six seven year veteran to be doing out there and he's already doing it and he's doing it at a very very high level puka uh what is he like one of four rookies ever to have multiple 150 yard games over the last 10 years. Um, he just continues to rewrite the record book for the rookie wide receiver. Yeah. That catch was like interesting because they went back and they reviewed it as well. And I was like, what are we reviewing here? And then it was like the call on the field stands as opposed to confirmed. I was like, do we not like see the green yeah. between like his foot and the white paint? <laughs> I just, I think that the referees were uh, they had a they had a bad week on Sunday. Let's just say that it was not a a fun time for uh, the referees on Sunday. But that catch, Sam, was amazing. And we we've seen Puka make some impressive catches. What was it? Mm-hmm. I think it was last season at BYU when they played Boise State. He had that crazy like diving catch. I want to say that was last mm-hmm. year. Maybe it was two years ago. But yeah, it's a uh, it's impressive impressive to see what he's doing. And I guess I'm even more impressed that it's with Cooper cup on the field. Still, we kind of talked about that a few yeah. weeks ago with cup coming back off of the uh, IR list and you know, how Stafford would kind of maybe revert back to having Cooper as his number one wide out. But Puka is, I mean, he had like what four or five catches last week, which was like a down week for him. Mm-hmm. It was like, Oh, 50, 50 mm-hmm. yards or whatever. <laughs> like that's a pretty good, you know, game for an average wide receiver. And then, Every other game this year, he's just been, you know, amazing. Like you said, those 100-yard games, really impressive to see. And I think that it's cool because now teams are game planning for him and he's still making these plays, right? Like he's still producing the numbers that he's been producing since the first week of the season. So just all around impressive from him. And when you look at him, like the Rams, I think it was their uh, social media account they posted – um some video of him with his family on the field before the game. And like, there were some other guys around when I'm like, he just looks like an NFL wide receiver, right? Like he looks like a big NFL wide receiver. It's not like, I don't know. I I'm a Colts fan. So like Josh Downs, for instance, their rookie uh, slot receiver, (laughs) he looks like he's me out on the field, like five, nine, just like a small dude in the slot, right? Like Puka is the opposite of that. Like that guy can take hits he was like blocking on goal line runs yesterday. And like, I mean, he's just, his body is built to be an awesome NFL wide receiver for the next 10, 12 years. And I'm excited to see what he does. And so like, take this for instance, uh, his 58 catches, I think leads the entire league. I'm double checking. It does his 58 catches leads the league. That's more than Stefan Diggs, more than Tyreek Hill, more than AJ Brown, more than Jamar chase. Uh, more than Travis Kelsey. I know Kelsey is a tight end, but he is highly targeted. You know, more than Devontae Adams. Keep the list going. Obviously, if he's first in the league, he's ahead of everyone. But but uh, his targets, that's also equally impressive. He's been targeted 82 times this season. That leads the league. Are you kidding me? I never would have picked a rookie wide receiver in any season to lead the league in targets. That means you're going, he's your guy. We're throwing him the ball because he can make plays. Puka is that guy. And then, of course, his yards this season, 752, that's third. Only Tyreek and A.J. Brown have more yards than Puka does this season in the NFL. So not only is he doing just – I mean, he's the clear-cut rookie of the year right now. He's got to be. I, I, you know, Tell me who else. I don't know. It's got to be Puka. Um, and not only that, but we're talking about a Pro Bowl guy in his rookie year, maybe even all pro. Uh, when it's all said and done, he is just outstanding. So, I mean, we could spend an entire podcast – just talking about Puka and what he's doing, but uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll stop right there. The last thing I'll say before we move on to your second star, Sam, is I'd like to see a little more, a little more of the uh, the red zone targets. That's all. Yeah, we've only got two touchdowns so far. I'd like to see that number, you know, through seven games. I'd like to see that number more like four or five. That's all I'm saying. But let's move on. Let's move on to your second star of the week, Sam. Second star. 
second star is going to shock you, Kyle Ireland. Um, maybe it won't, but I think it's a well-deserved recognition from the highly prestigious uh, Star Awards from the Yards After College podcast. This guy deserves one. I think I've given it to him before, but it's probably been a year or two. Um, but I'm giving it to Garrett Bowles, the tackle oh, nice. on the Denver Broncos offensive line. He deserves it. And this is why. And I'm, we've talked about it on this podcast before. It's just the progression from years one, two, and three in his NFL career all the way to where he is now. You know, he was the most penalized offensive lineman for the first two years of his career. And I think the third year wasn't much better. And then suddenly something flipped, the switch flipped, you know. Something changed in that fourth season where he became a very reliable offensive lineman, one of the best in the league. He got paid for it, you know, got a nice new contract, and and he's, you know, a Pro Bowl caliber guy. But let me tell you why he's my second star this week for the Denver Broncos. Garrett Bowles had 31 pass-blocking snaps on Sunday against the Green Bay Packers. Zero sacks, zero pressures allowed by Garrett Bowles. And this is a guy who used to get penalized for holdings like you're handing out candy on, on Halloween. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it like those yellow flags were flying in like, Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll have another. Yes. Thank you. Uh, he was just getting that call all the time. His first few years in the league and to see him just kind of locking down that edge. Now um, it's just awesome. And, and I feel for him. He deserves a better team situation and hopefully it changes for the better in Denver. But if not, I would love to see him in a situation where he can be a, a just a real solid contributor for a winning team on the offensive line. Yeah, he's one of those guys that it's it's fun to see when they not necessarily like have slow starts to their careers, but like struggle and then to overcome that. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the time, and we, we can talk about this later in the podcast as well, is like there's so much pressure on NFL teams and head coaches and whatnot to and general managers to like, get these draft picks and young players like on the field and producing at a high level, like their rookie in second years. And it doesn't always work out that way, right? Like some of these players need development and you have to go into a situation where they're allowing you to develop. And it's, it's cool to see that the Broncos didn't write Garrett Bowles off after, you know, the rough right. start that he had to his career. <laughs> they could have. It's they a lesson learned, could've. right? Because yeah. he's turned into a really productive player, you know, He's he's probably on the edge of like being one of those Pro Bowl caliber linemen, right? Like he mm -hmm. he's up there with like the top guys in the league at his position. So cool to see. Uh, I I think that it was nice of you to throw the offensive lineman a bone. I like it because we usually focus it, on the skill position guys. Yeah, but I mean the the name that popped up a couple weeks ago to me that I. I believe it was uh, PFF that also put out um, something similar to the, the thing that I saw you retweet about Garrett yesterday was like Penny Sewell, like in the numbers that he's putting yeah. up this season, right? Like it sometimes goes unnoticed and I'm sure that mm -hmm. your first star, we will also talk about this because if your first star is not who I think it is, then I'm going to be disappointed. But sometimes <laughs> these guys go unnoticed because they're just doing their jobs well. So good job on you, Garrett Bowles. All right, Sam. Number one right. star of the week. Who is it? And if it isn't who I think it is, I'm going to be a little disappointed and shocked. First star. Kyle, I don't know how you can be disappointed in this first star because he's uh, he's wearing the blue and white of the Indianapolis Colts. Matt Gay is our first. I'm just joking. I was waiting to see the shock on your face that I'm seeing. I was right going to be like, no. I mean, I, I, love, I love Matt Gay as the Colts kicker, but he also missed a field goal yesterday. So I was like, where, where are we going with this? We're going with the uh, the extra points? No, like, no, what's what's no, happening here? <laughs> no, no offense. Matt Gay's had a great season. I, I just had to shock you because you said if it wasn't who you thought it would, uh, it probably is. It probably is who you think it is. Um, I've got to give this one to the former Ute Jalen Johnson as the first star of the week. I mean, uh, man, he, what is he in year four now? Year four or five, I can't remember, of his NFL career. And just one pick. And again, we've talked about this. Interceptions doesn't always show how great of a defensive back you are because if you're locking down the receiver, they're not going to throw that way. And there was a stat that we talked about either last week or the week before with Jalen Johnson being one of the top five uh, cornerbacks in the league for opponent QB rating. Right, quarterbacks aren't testing him, and when they are, they're not being successful because he is locking down the receivers. He is 
uh, pulling out pass pass defenses, PBUs. You know, he's doing his job and he's doing it well. So to get rewarded with some interceptions on Sunday, two of them, including a pick six, interceptions number two and three for his career, uh, well-deserved Jalen Johnson. He's going into a contract year uh, this offseason. And and so, and, and his celebration, his touchdown celebration, he was, he was, you know, yeah, doing the dollar, you know, <laughs> it's making it rain thing. So he, he definitely wants to get paid. I think he's earned earned a nice uh, second contract in the NFL and his play on Sunday is deserving of not only a nice second contract, but of my first star this week. Yeah. It's funny how we, we almost spoke it into existence, Sam, when we talked about him last week or two weeks ago, whenever it was, I don't know. These weeks blur together, Sam. They really do. I'm like, how long ago was it that we talked about? Oh, that was (laughs) seven days ago, (laughs) but yeah, no, Jalen had an awesome game on Sunday and to be able to have it in like a blowout game over the Raiders too, like where that game wasn't even close and granted, like Jimmy Garoppolo didn't play and start. And so they were just on backup quarterbacks, but it was, it was another reason I put, I pointed this out on Twitter. It's like what we talked about. This is the reason why uh, teams and you know quarterbacks typically don't throw Jalen's way is because when they do bad things happen and he proved it on Mm -hmm. Sunday, on a couple of drives late in the game, uh, shut that game down for the Bears to win against the Raiders. So, yeah, congrats to Jalen on your uh, first star, the uh, highly regarded award that it is. And uh, I, <laughs> I just, I thought it, I thought it was an awesome performance. Uh, Sam, let's take a quick break. We, sh- we, we should, we should make T-shirts. We should make a T-shirt that says that says um, <laughs> Yards After College Podcast first star of the week. And we can mail it out to these guys. You know, I'm sure they would love it. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I I don't want to front the the cost of it, so we need to get <laughs> we need to get Mountain Dew to sponsor it, That's and then right. we'll send and then we'll send out the shirts. Right? <laughs> Could you imagine if they wore something like that to a presser? Heck yeah, heck yeah. That anyway. would be amazing. All right, I digress. Great. No, I like I like the train of thought. We'll see if we can flesh out that idea over the next little bit. (laughs) All right, let's take a quick break, Sam, and then we will come back. We will talk about a few more of the other local guys that had some standout performances this last week in week seven, and then we will look ahead to week eight. All right, welcome back to the Yards After College podcast powered by kslsports.com and the new and improved KSL Sports app as well. Make sure you download that on your phones, your iPads. Uh, You can not only just read our articles, you can listen to live broadcasts. You can watch high school football games on there. We're in the middle of postseason for high school football. So all things football, including listening to this podcast, you can do on the KSL sports app as well. But Sam, a couple other guys that we should talk about just real briefly before we move on to uh, a guy that I really want to focus on is uh, we've got Taysom Hill who scored on Thursday night football. Mm -hmm. I got his first touchdown of the, of the season. Um, but you also mentioned Jalen, or sorry, Julian Blackman, who had his interception. He had a nice game against the Browns. Yeah, I thought that was a really good performance by him. He almost had an amazing uh, second interception in that game. He had the first one where he kind of yeah. came across and just broke really nicely on the route. I didn't think it was a bad decision by Je- uh, Deshaun Watson on the play either, but Julian just made a heck of a play going to the sideline on it. But the other one that he had, I think it was later in the game with P.J. Walker, but he like reached back. He almost pulled down this like one handed catch. It was mm-hmm. amazing. Uh, so really nice to see Julian. We talked about him. I wanted to say, I don't have it in front of me right now, but I think he was one of your like comeback player of the year or something. I don't remember. Maybe it was last year, but he was we did last talk, year. We yeah. did talk about him before the season, kind of mm-hmm. how he's battled these injuries throughout his first couple of seasons in the league. So Nice to see him being able to make some really big highlight plays. Uh, Jalen Warren, you mentioned, had a big game, mm-hmm. got into the end zone for the first time this season. Uh, I want to say it's his second touchdown of his career as well. Um, and then Jordan Love, this is the guy that I want to focus on for a few minutes with you, Sam. Because I thought that he had some good and some bad against the Broncos. You obviously watched that game. And mm-hmm. I, the thing that I'm torn with with Jordan Love is – we've seen flashes from him, right? Like we saw it with Aaron Rodgers, even on the team in the last few years when he had, you know, some time Jordan loves got a pretty nice deep ball, right? Like he can, 
he doesn't have the same arm as some other guys, but like he, right. he throws a pretty ball. And we saw some really nice things from him to start the season. The first two weeks of the season, uh, the Packers go one and one. They barely lose to the Falcons by a point in their second game after beating the Bears uh, in week one. But Jordan Love, he starts off the season red hot. Six touchdowns, zero interceptions. Mm -hmm. Since then, uh, and they they were also coming off a bye this last week, which is another thing that I want to talk about um, in this Broncos game. But since then, he's thrown four touchdown passes, but he's also thrown, what is it, seven interceptions in the last four games. So mm-hmm. a little bit of a up the mountain climb and sliding mm-hmm. down the hill um, kind of in this like midway point of the first, you know, seven weeks of the season for him. So what what do you think Jordan needs to do to kind of improve based off of the negative performances that he, I guess you could say he's had in the last four games, right? Where mm-hmm. they've lost three well, in a row now. But you've got so much pressure on young quarterbacks in the league. We saw this. We've talked about it with Zach Wilson and a bunch of these other guys. And I know Jordan Love is in a different situation, right? He sat behind Aaron Rodgers for three years. <clears throat> now it's his time to shine. Everybody thinks that he's just going to come on the field seven games into his career and just be red hot. But I still think that he's – it's his rookie year essentially, right? Like, I mean, he hasn't played that much in the NFL other than these last seven games. So what do you think he needs to do to improve? Well – he needs to continue to learn the the like the best way any NFL player can learn is in real live reps in game experience going through just those those learning curves and growing pains and there needs to be some patience from not only him for himself but from the team from the fan base which unfortunately in sports these days that sometimes there just isn't a lot of, but, and, and, you know, and we, we were talking about it, seeing some of the comments on social media about love over the weekend, um, you know, that, you know, let's, yeah, I, I, yeah. there's one comment that stood out to me saying, basically, you know, it is what it is. Let's call it like it is. Jordan love uh, is a bust. And I'm like seven games, basically seven games into his career. I don't think you can call anyone a bust that far uh, unless maybe he's got two touchdowns and 12 picks Then maybe you can lean that direction, but still go back and look at someone like Troy Aikman's rookie year stats or um, even Peyton Manning's rookie year stats. You know what I mean? So uh, come on, let's be calm. Let's be patient. Let's let them learn. And one thing like there's a huge learning opportunity that came out of Sunday's game against the Broncos. And I'm sure he knew immediately when he sat down on the bench and as he's reviewing film on Monday, I'm sure he's seeing it and and just understanding some of the decision-making as a quarterback, you talked about his arm strength, you know, you feel like you can do anything. You can feel like, you know, Zach Wilson's, I think early in his career went through a lot of this where he felt like he could make any throw he wanted. And some of those throws, well, it's a lot harder to make in the NFL. So at the end of that game, near the end of that game, you know, the Packers, they just need to get in the field goal range here to kick a field goal and win the game. Jordan takes that deep shot downfield and it just kind of hangs up there into double coverage. Safety floats over, ball gets picked off and that ended the game, you know, and, and I just looking at his facial expressions on the bench, he knew it. He knew it. I guarantee you he's going to remember that the next time he is in that situation. I guarantee you he will remember that, that if none of the, the, you know, if if the deep threat is the only option, he might think twice about chucking it and just tuck and run or something like that, you know, do something to keep the drive alive, keep it going, keep the chains moving instead of uh, doing something that could potentially hurt the chances at winning a game, which is what he did on Sunday. But I still have a lot of hope and uh, optimism in Jordan Love. I think there's still a lot of growth that can be made by him, a lot of learning, uh, mental growth as well, you know, maturity, all those things. And he's going to he's going to gain that through these final 10 games this year or however many they have left. And uh, let's see, they played six, so 11 more games. He's got 11 more games to, to learn and to grow and to experience and then you roll that over to next year and see if he can take the next step. Yeah, totally. I think that that was a, uh, a smart uh, call by you on that final drive, just like kind of breaking that down because like, I, I want to focus even just on the throw itself, right? Like he's going to mm-hmm. learn that he can't float that pass like he did. Right. Right. Like, it's gotta be a little bit 
<clears throat> I'm not gonna say like on a rope at that distance, but like it's got to be a little bit more high velocity of a throw. Like that's something you can do in college if like the wide receivers like completely beat the DB and the guy's just sitting there and like has to come back for the ball even or something like that, you know. But like double coverage, like safety coming over, like it was just you can't you can't do that. And like you said, he's gonna learn the mm-hmm. like time situation, you know, all that kind of plays into it, but uh you did say, you know, the playing experience is going to be the most valuable thing for him because there's only so much you can do. We saw it with Aaron Rodgers, with Brett Favre and now with him and Aaron Rodgers, like the three years on the bench, I'm sure he learned a ton. Sure. He learned a ton, just like Zach Wilson's probably learning a ton from Aaron Rodgers right now. Right. Like, I mean, when you see a guy who's a four-time MVP, like you're going to learn a lot from him just watching his day-to-day, you know, actions. But being able to go out there and actually experience it yourself is something that Jordan Love has only played in 16 games, Sam. He hasn't even played an entire mm-hmm. NFL season throughout his three years mm-hmm. in the league. So, or four years in the league because he didn't even, I think he was inactive every game his rookie year, right? Like, let's give mm-hmm. the guy a break. Let's treat it like his rookie year. And then we'll see what he does, at, you know, in his like complete first full season. And then we can kind of discuss from there. But I think the Packers, they did something really cool with him is, they they did that like they didn't pick up his option but they like did the extension with them for like the two years so he's not only under contract for this year but he's under contract for next year as well so Mm -hmm. it's like a a two-year window of hey prove us right or wrong jordan and then we'll make a decision after the 2024 season so like the packers aren't even in a situation even this year where it's like hey it's jordan love or bust in 2023 and i think that's smart because now jordan doesn't have like as much pressure as like, I mean, he's the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. There's a level of pressure there, but uh, it could have been worse than uh, the situation the Packers kind of set him up for. So I, I thought that that was a nice thing by them. But um, Sam, next week, we are embarking mm-hmm. upon what is nearing the, I, I, I hate having the 17 games because it's like, I can't say after week eight, it's like, <laughs> the midway point of the season it's like you have to wait until like the wednesday right and then you're like okay now we're at the the midway (laughs) point of the season so uh this night or tonight we have uh san francisco versus minnesota to wrap up week seven on monday night football but looking ahead on week eight is there a game or two that stands out for you sam that you're looking forward to most i think there's Obviously, Sunday Night Football is going to be kind of a, whew, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see who the Bears trot mm-hmm. out there at quarterback. Well, I don't know if Justin Fields is ready right, ready to come back from his injury, but yeah, who knows? The Bears won, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Um, yeah, there's a few games on here. It, it's kind of interesting because when you look at the schedule, you look ahead and you see a, you see a matchup like, um, uh, which one was I thinking about? Like Browns and Seahawks. They're two four and two teams. And I, I look at that matchup and I just think, Oh, I don't want to watch that. You know, I, it's probably going to be better than that. But I see that I'm like, no, I don't want to watch that. I get the exact same feeling for a game like the Jags and Steelers. And look, I know I picked the Jags to have a great season this year, but they just haven't been really fun to watch yet. And so I'm just thinking from a fun standpoint, neither of those two teams are that like uh, exciting yet. I, and maybe I'm missing something. Um, that would be an intriguing game, but the game that gets me excited a little bit you know for the morning i i am interested in that vikings packers game but in the afternoon it's the Bengals and niners there's just something about that matchup mm-hmm. especially recently with you know um yeah. you know postseason uh, history behind the two uh that they've had over the decades and everything like that uh there's just something about that the niners have been uh very good this year they've been a fun to watch team i'm still interested to see if, what the Bengals are capable of doing this season and so that's the game that kind of catches my eye for uh, this upcoming sunday i like it i think that that'll be a fun game i think it's an important game too for the Bengals, right yeah like, you're 500 right now through six weeks of the season they were my super bowl winning pick sam and pff, it's not looked good so far so yeah and i think a lot of that has to do with health right like i mean joe looks good for my pick up. either who was your pick again? The Vikings. You had them winning it They're all? two and four. Sam, 
I'm pretty sure I did. I had them against the Jags in the Super Bowl. <laughs> you went bold, man. Oh, that's I was hoping right. that uh, Kirk did Cousins could fill that space in his in his award closet. <laughs> I was like, when I was like sitting there, I was like, who did you pick? I'm like looking down the list of teams. I was like, it wasn't them. <laughs> My goodness. Hey, the one yeah. thing the Vikings have going for them is that division isn't like amazing. I mean, the Lions are good, but they just got blown out by the Ravens. So like, we'll see how yeah. good they actually are. And then, you know, the, the Packers haven't done anything to, you know, inspire you yet. And the Bears well, aren't good. So it's still well, it's still early, still early for them. If they can beat what, the Packers, what was, you know. What was the Giants record? Weren't they eight and eight when they stormed through the playoffs and derailed yeah, the undefeated against the undefeated Pats? Patriots. Yeah. So I'm just saying, Possible. just get to the playoffs. Possible. Just get to the playoffs, Vikings. That's all you, you got to do. You just got to get on a hot streak. And, hey, I think it's Kirk Cousins, like, I want to say he's, like, top three in touchdown passes. So, like, they're still he's, slinging he's the ball over the good. field. I think the thing is they don't have a good running game. But maybe when yeah. Cam Akers comes in, you know, he starts finding some some rhythm. But I'm going to go with – I'm going to go with the Saints versus the Colts, Sam. And okay. I'm not just saying this because it's my team. I'm saying it because there's a handful of local guys on either side. Yeah. And yep. I like I like the games that are stacked with the local guys because it's more fun for me to watch. And so you got, you know, Taysom, Jamal, Rashid Shahid, Nephi Sewell on the Saints side of things. Daniel Sorensen's on the practice squad now again for them. And then on the Colts side, I still am interested to see how Zach Moss, Jonathan Taylor situation yeah. plays out. Especially it's just a little but teaser. Here. On Sunday. But, between now and the trade deadline, Sam, that's all I'm going to say. Just interested to see how okay. it plays out. Yeah, I mean, they they both had 18 carries each on Sunday. Uh, Taylor had 70-plus. Moss had 50-plus. So, yeah, it's – how will that play out? That'll be interesting to watch. I just want to see if it's if it's going to be a one-two tandem backfield or is it going to end up being JT? Like, he looked like JT again yesterday, so – he sure did. Know. It yeah. looked awesome, but Moss had anyway. some runs too, though. Moss had yeah, that's some. That's what runs I'm saying. Too, it, it, it's they, nice to have. If a they had punch, Anthony so. Richardson, Sam, I I tweeted this at you. If they had Anthony Richardson healthy, my goodness, they would have the best rushing attack in the league. They would be amazing, which would be nice because yeah. their passing game has left me wanting, and it's only because they turned the ball over like crazy. <laughs> but anyway, Sam, yeah. that was good. Good recap of week seven. Uh, appreciate your time. Before we, yeah. we sign off, we've got two minutes here before I got to wrap this thing up. What can you tease for me on KSL Sports Live this week that our audience can go check out? Check us out at uh, kslsports.com on the KSL Sports app and KSL TV Plus. I think that's what it's called. Uh, the KSL Plus app, sorry. That's where you can watch our show streamed because this weekend we are loaded up with Utah high school football playoffs. And if you are listening from out of the state of Utah, watch some of these games. Utah is sixth in the country producing NFL talent per capita out of high school. So there is great high school football here. We've got that. We've got great college football game days in town for the Utes and Ducks. BYU's at Texas, and then of course another weekend of the NFL. It doesn't get much better than that. Plus, I'm a big baseball guy, so I'm loving the baseball playoffs too. This is the best time of year. Game seven of the ALCS tonight, Sam. Who do you got? You got Rangers or Astros? I'll be on it. I'm pulling for the Rangers. I'm pulling oh, for the good, Rangers. Good. good. I hate both because of the teams because uh, they're in they're in my division, but I just I can't. can't Rangers Phillies. I think that's what I want. I like I it. I want to see Rangers Philly. So there it is. There's Sam. You can find him on Twitter at KSL or sorry on TV at KSL sports live every, uh, every night you can find him that he's, that he's on, you know, he's off on Mondays and Tuesdays, but other than that, you can find him. And then <laughs> obviously on KSL sports live with all things locals in the NFL on Sunday. And then a stack show on Saturday as well. It's Friday night, high school football. It's going to be good stuff. But you can find him on social media at Samsworth underscore TV. You can find me at Kyle Ireland. Until next week, this has been the Yards After College podcast powered by KSLSports.com.